Hi everyone, this is Mary Sutherland. It's been a, I think it's been almost a week before, uh, since our last uh, live stream. So I thought maybe I'd just kind of stop on in and say howdy doody. Hey, guess what? Can you tell? I got my hair cut. But, uh, yeah, I took about, probably about that much off. But it's easier to take care of in the summer. So, anyhow, and... So I feel good about it, and uh, I hope that you all like it. Uh, so we got a few things to talk about today, but um, in the meantime, before everybody gets in, let me remind you to go to my website at BurlingtonMoose.net. Uh, there, uh, any topic that you may be interested in, uh, and you have a question for me about it, just go to that little box that says search engine, type in the topic, and then what um, all, all these pages will pop up on all these um, different uh, topics that I've written about. Uh, they, that should answer most of your questions. If not, you can go to my facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Mary Sutherland. And we're... Uh, We've got, uh, we're giving, a, uh, in our group right now, we're actually giving uh, an inflatable alien away, uh, an alien toy. So uh, just, uh, if you're a group member, just go there, sign your name, uh, send me a private message, your, uh, your address, and we'll be doing the uh, drawing at the end of this month. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll do uh, free drawings in my group, whether it be uh, some sort of a toy or a book or something metaphysical, you know. It's just my way of saying I appreciate you all. Hi, Vivian. How are you doing today, darling? Um, I, you know, some people don't like being called fun and darling. They think it's... Um, uh, it was on Facebook the other day, or today it was actually on about uh, some girl, they were talking about how insulting they felt that was being called fun. And personally, I like people call me fun. I'd rather have call me a nice word than something mean. I remember one time though, um, this was with my first marriage, uh, my mother-in-law was a you-know-what and uh, she was one of those horror stories you know that you make um, um, comedy from from movies you know on the, the bad 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 mother-in-law and so one day I got cocky with her and I said you know because she's always talking about me she hated me anyhow I walked I came up to her and I said you know what if you got a problem with me, instead of talking behind my back, why don't you just say it right to my face? She looked at, at thought about it for a little while, and she said it to my face. And I just looked at her, and I said, you know what? From now on, you got something to say. You can talk behind my back. <laughs> I didn't like what she had to say. <laughs> so, so much for that. So, anyhow, uh, we're going to... Hi, Jared. Thanks for joining. Um... Today uh, is Tractor Day in Winslow, and they had a they had a, a little flea market, and I found this. Oh, I paid like two dollars for it. Isn't that pretty? It's silver and blue hearts. I mean, you know, blue. I liked it. And I also got some. Um, I also got some jewelry for their glitter tree for the fairies. So I didn't want to forget them. Actually, that's why I stopped in is to get some uh, glitter for the glitter tree for the fairies in Burlington. But uh, but then I seen this and I thought, oh my god, it is so cute. And for I mean, two bucks, I and mean, can't go wrong there, right? <laughs> um, I've been busy. Actually, I've been too busy. And people are getting upset with me because I'm so busy right now. I'm working on saving the mounds. 
I'm trying to set up, um, in order for me to get what I need accomplished with these mounds, and the preservation of the earthen mounds, and, and the, you know, getting the information out about the mound builders, is I, I need that power. So I need to set myself up as a non-profit. Um, and calling, I gotta come up with a name, something like Mounds, uh, North American Mounds Preservation um, Society. And um, and so there, you know, I um, put myself down, you know, as the, uh, you know, um, I don't know, chairperson. So that when I go to these museums, I'm able to, in, you know, have a card, be able to present it to the, uh, the curators and that, and be able to actually get down into those rooms where that are, a lot of the stuff is not available to the public. Um, I actually felt very, very lucky. Well, being an author opens up the doors a lot to a person, too, especially me being an author of a five-book series in Search of Ancient Man. So with that in mind, I went to the, the, the Beloit Anthropology Museum uh, in Beloit, Wisconsin, where uh, I got to speak to the curator, told him what I was doing, and there's um, and and uh, one of the curators gave me a tour of what they had with the mound builders and uh, actually let me allowed me to uh, take pictures and told me the stories of how they managed to get them and I just had to fill out this form of what I want to see when I want to go back to their place and they're going to pull um, they're going to send me an inventory. Of everything that they have then I look at the inventory I tell them what I'd like to see and then they will set up an appointment for me to go down and I'll be able to actually see them touch them take photos of them document and I came across the gem of all gems and that was the personal journal of F.S. Perkins who had at one point in time, over 30,000 artifacts that he had collected in the Burlington, Wisconsin area. And so there it was. I mean, I thought that it had been lost forever. Nobody would ever see that. But the, the curator showed it to me, and um, I'm hoping that they'll allow me to, you know, uh, photograph the pages, copy the pages of uh, Perkins so that I can make it available to all of you too. So um, anyhow, but that's why I need to get myself set up as a nonprofit. There's, um, now this all depends though on the universe and how the universe works because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever of how hard I work on a project, how well I do on a project. If the universe wants me to go forth with this, they're going to open up all the doors where I don't have these obstacles. All right, if this is my path. But now, if it's not my path, then no matter what I do, they're going to put up obstacles where I can't make this happen. But between me and you, don't get the word out to anybody else, okay? There's a, there's a pyramid. It's a step stepped flat top pyramid in Burlington, Wisconsin. Nobody even knows, well, Fred knows about it. But Fred's the only one that knows about it. Now you got, I'm telling you guys for the first time. If I can get this nonprofit uh, uh, organization set up for the preservation of the earth and mounds of North America, I am going to apply for a grant and see if I can't purchase that pyramid in Burlington. Now the pyramid itself has a bed and breakfast already on there. So what I want to do is preserve the mount or the, the flat top step pyramid in Burlington and use the the bed and breakfast as a museum. And so that um, all of you will be able to experience being on a pyramid but plus uh, we'll be able to hold, I'll be able to go around gathering artifacts, putting them on display, 
and we can we can show everybody that this is an historic prehistoric uh, city and um, and I just think that it, it'll work um, um, I could probably buy it on my own but if I can get a grant that would even be better um, now I'm not going to live in Burlington myself though uh, so I'll be looking for volunteers to work there and um, and then of course I'll be there you know giving tours and things too like this but I love my home here and I, and I really don't want to give that up but I do need to create something uh, some sort of prehistoric, prehistoric museum based on the preservation of the earthen mounds of Wisconsin and so that so I've been busy I've been and uh, I've been on radio shows um, and I um, and I want to thank all those guys for giving me on their shows, giving me airtime. Um, the uh, the oh my God, I can't even think of their names. I'm a, and I love them both very much. Uh, uh, up in Michigan, uh, the AARP, I believe it is. It's a um, um, American. Uh, well, it's uh, what is it? Oh gosh, I'm so sorry, Joe and. And to you know, you guys, if you're watching this show, because I can't remember. But anyhow, they have a big conference in October, and they're going to allow me to go up to their conference up in Michigan and talk to the audience about the plight of the North American mounds. So, anyhow, so I'll be up there in October. Um, I, so I want to thank them for giving me this time to um, uh, to present my story, and they also want to do sit down with me and help me with the um, with the getting showing me how to get these uh, these grants and how to set up a nonprofit and that as well. Um, and and then I also want to thank the uh, the the Boyd uh, Anthropology Museum for the time and effort that they're getting, because they're trying to you know we got along really good and they said you know that with them backing me it'll open it'll open up doors so that I can get into some of the other museums like in Milwaukee and in Madison where I can get down and see what type of artifacts that they have on display as well. But in order to do this, I've had to go through my computers and trying to, what I'm trying to do is create a presentation for Beloit uh, Anthropology Museum where they can see the work I've done on the mounds in Burlington. Because see, as far as everybody's concerned, there wasn't mounds in Burlington. And that's why Burlington is getting away with destroying all these um, these artifacts and these uh, skeletal remains of our um, ancient ancestors um, while the uh, Wisconsin State Historical Society just looks the other way so what I need to do is put together a presentation with the with uh, uh, artifacts that I've found uh, pictures that I have taken of these mounds uh, um, and, and so anyhow I'm compiling all this right now and trying to put together some sort of a folder that I can put all this in so and and take it to them so that they don't think I'm just you know just um, uh, I don't know like a tourist or something that wants a, a free trip through the museum you know and I'm full of BS um, I want them to realize you know that I'm on the up and up and I'm very very serious about my um, the trying to save or preserve the uh, ancient mound builders so anyhow that has been taking up a lot of my time and so television or radio shows uh, uh, speaking engagements um, uh, working with the museum and th and I just started this project what a week ago that's and I started it because I realized that Burlington's up to its old tricks again and they had uh, uh, they they were doing some construction work on this one road down there, side road in Burlington, and they uncovered 
skeletal remains. And um, by rights, um, there is a federal law protecting them. And uh, anyhow, this is a big, the law is a big problem. And so the fill, they're using the fill that they're in the road to be used in a swimming pool. And it's so disrespectful. It is so wrong. This is our history. This is our national treasure. No place in the world do they have these mounds except in North America, you know, such as they are. So, anyhow, and I, I last time they tried this, I did go to the Indians, and I asked them if they'd help me, and they said no, because it wasn't happening on, um, it wasn't happening on Indian land. Um, I had went to the, um, uh, the State Department of Archaeology in, um, in Madison, and Mad they said that to send them evidence that these people had actually existed in Burlington, they'd get back to me. So I spent, I, I went down there, I photographed the mounds, I sent them all this documentation, they never contacted me back. But that's been a long time ago, many, many years ago. Now they're pulling it again, but now I have more followers, um, I understand the laws more, and I realize that if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. So it's going to be one, I am involved in one heck of a project to start an organization to preserve the American, North American mounds and creating a museum that will contain all these artifacts. So it's a very big project. And, um, but like I said, more and more people are jumping on the bandwagon and helping me. But I'm moving so fast because I've got so many things, so many people I got to talk to. And it's like people are getting a little angry with me because they're saying, well, Mary, you're not paying any attention anymore. You know, you're jumping all over the place. And, um, and, and actually, feeling insulted but I mean I, I'm and I am so so sorry for that but right now it's a two-man show Brad and myself and we need to get this done um, Vivian have you read my books I did a five book series in search of ancient man and and I did talk to the Native American and they did tell me that they would not help me since the stuff wasn't on reservation. So now this is your viewpoint on it, and that's great. I totally understand where you're coming from with that. But I've been down that road before. And if it didn't work before... Now, I am going to be going up to Michigan, though. And I will be speaking with several of the chiefs up there. And maybe through them... Because I'm a white person, so maybe if I can go through them, they can open up doors for me down here in the Burlington area where, you know, the uh, the Native Americans in this area will be more receptive to what I have to say. Okay? So, because I need all the help. It's all of our lands. It's the Indians' land. It's, well, it's the red skin's land, it's the yellow skin, it's the, it's the, the brown skin, it's the white skin. This was a race of people. They were our ancestors. We probably all carry their genes. And so we have to come together as unified to protect the, to protect their name, to give them back their power, and to preserve and then learn their traditions exactly we are one and we need to learn and it's not just learning trying to prove a point that they existed that's just the start then we need to understand their traditions because their traditions were more um uh, i mean they were high technology they built waterways they built roadways they uh, they they had the the manas, um, you know the flying machines. Um, they understood holistic medicine. You know 
there's so much they you know they had a different religion than the religion we have today it was more um it was more um nature worshiping they understood the ley lines they understood the portals time travel all that that's what we need we need to learn all this stuff and the only place that we're going to learn it from is going back in history and learning from it through our ancient ancestors so that's what I've been doing, going to museums, uh, 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 by getting a whole, trying to find some of the old books uh, and, and, and maps. I mean, I have been, for the last week, I, I, I've been chasing my tail. I mean, round and round and round. And um, it's working, though. I've got the attention. Uh, so that's a good thing. And and I've decided I'm not going to allow myself to go crazy on this, though, uh, because I have to realize, I have to re I have to breathe. You know, I have to, I can't let this become a obsession. I want, I'm going to give the, the mound builders, our ancestors, all of our ancestors, my time, my dedication. I promise them I would, and I will. But I also have to learn to breathe and rely on them to help me as well. Rely on the universe. Rely on all of you. Because it's going to take all of us to bring this all back again. And um, like I said, some people are like, well, you know, you're not even talking anymore. Well, I am, but it's a big project. And um, and I also am trying, I've got, I'm I'm trying to finish up my book. Um, um, now that I know I have to go to Michigan, I want to. Um, I need to finish my book, um, uh, book five in my uh, five book series in search of ancient man as well. So I gotta get that done. Uh, it, it, it's just somebody uh, said, "Well, you're retired." Yeah, I sure am, aren't I, guys? So in the meantime, guess what I got? I have psychic too. Who wants to have the cards for? I'm gonna do a general reading for everybody, and you know our what the world's going through. The big G reading. How's that? Things been getting a little stranger. Oh my God! I have. I'm, I have to tell you this. This is so funny. If I can find it, hold on. Hold on. You know that, uh, oh, no, I'm just going to find it to make more sense of it for you. Do you remember the other day that, uh, yesterday I believe it was, Trump gets out there on television and gives this threat to the, you know, North Korea, and he, he gives his quote, hold on, let me find it first. Because it's too funny. And you can find it on my Facebook. Okay. On my timeline. I couldn't believe it. I <coughs> Remember that, um, that moment when Trump was sitting there and got that stern look on his face. And, and Trump says to, uh, there's a threatening speech to North Korea. And he says, they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. And he just glares, right? Remember how everybody's sitting back going, whoa. Guess what, folks? He plagiarized that. That was directly stolen from the Red Skull in Captain America comic book. Writ number 370, written in 1990. And remember, the Red Skull was, um, um, he was the, uh, he was, he, how, what do you call it, um, the anti, where Captain America was a hero, Red Skull was the anti-hero. He was um, Captain America's nemesis. But, in that comic book, it says, they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. 
Now, I don't know if Trump read, I don't know if Trump reads comic books, or maybe it was his, um, maybe it was his kid. Maybe he was his speechwriter. But it definitely, definitely came from, uh, it definitely came from uh, um, his, uh, from that comic book. That was so funny, wasn't it, Viv? <laughs> God. Okay, so, oh, now, as I have to do, this was for even promised in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. That's, that's all it is. Everybody makes life too complicated. Uh, but, now, for what, now, last two weeks, I've been asking the universe to upgrade my, my ability to be psychic. Well, I came across this woman the other day, uh, and she gave some hints of how to um, uh, how to get to a point of meditation where you can start visiting with people from the other side. And and I thought, well, okay, well, I've been, I've been being at, you know, I've asked about this, so, you know, maybe this is what we're supposed to do. So, anyhow, um, she basically was counting down from seven to one, and you get to that point, and when you hit one, see, you're taking a breath to seven, relax, six. Relax. And each time you do this, when, okay, so six, relax. Now you're going deeper into meditation. Seven, you're going deeper. I'm sorry, five, you're going deeper. Four, three, two, one. So now when you hit one, you have your eyes closed and you open up your psychic eye. And you ask, close your eyes and ask to speak to someone that has crossed. Okay, simple enough, right? Uh, and then when you get done, you do a disconnect so that you're not left open so everybody can come through. So anyhow, you do a disconnect, and then when you're done, uh, you disconnect and you go, one, you're waking up. Two, you're waking more, and three, wiggle your wiggle your fingers and your toes, open up your eyes, and now you're awake. How much more simple can that be, right? I've always said, if something's going to work, it's got to be simplicity in the most simplistic manner. So now I know I've been asking, and I've been getting some really good results, but I've never, you know done that and I mean I talk to the dead all the time psychically intuitively but um, and I can basically hear what they have to say intuitively but I did this I've only done it twice now because I just learned it so anyhow I did the first time now Brad's dad has crossed over okay he crossed over about two or three weeks ago maybe about three weeks, maybe even four. So anyhow, oh, the card's going all over the place. So anyhow, oh, so anyhow, um, so I did the uh, seven, six, deeper, five, deeper. Move my eyes closed. Now I'm. It's your psychic guy right here that you. You want to see through, but anyhow, I did the seven, the six, I took down to one, kept my eyes closed, and before I could say who I wanted to say, because you're supposed to have that, um, it takes you to, um, you find yourself a happy place, place of protection, you know. And that's where you're going to find yourself is in that place protected. So you kind of visualize that. You know, even before you do this, so you know where you're going, right? It's always like you're going to go on a trip. You kind of like to have a kind of an idea where you're going to end up. So 
anyhow, um, I'm trying to think, gosh, where do I want to go? I think, because see, this is what I'm doing as I'm doing the countdown, because I kind of did it wrong, right? Now I know. Get Find my happy place, get that in my mind, keep the rest of the stuff out, and then just do the seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, but anyhow, so I kind of think, gosh, where, where am I going? You know, then I'm trying to visualize, you know, um, um, woods, you know, with trees. And like, boom, when the, I hit that one, it was like, boom, all of a sudden it was like a lucid dreaming. Because if you close your eyes and you visualize, it's all black, right? Kind of black and hazy. Maybe you, but I mean, and, and you can see pictures and stuff, but you're kind of like, it's a picture behind your eyelids, so it's kind of dark in color. But when you do this, I realize that it's like this picture just, boom, right to you. And it's all in color. It's just as vivid as you seeing me right now. It's all in color. And it was like, whoa, because I'd never seen this place before. And, and then I, uh, so anyhow, I seen this, and, and just about that time, Brad yells at me that dinner was ready. And so... They kind of ended that, right? And I just said, the, but I could see Brad's dad coming towards me. But we didn't have a chance to talk because Brad kind of disconnected there. But uh, anyhow, I told Brad, I says, Brad, you, this is crazy, but I know you. I said, I hope you don't think it's crazy. And I says, I hope that I'm not going to upset you with what I said. Or what I saw, but I says you need to know. And I says I was just up there meditating, and I seen your dad. And so Brad listens, and like, cause I'm saying it seemed it it's kind of it was kind of like an ocean, like a a bay, you know, like a gulf and an ocean. But I says it was smaller, like a like a bay, like um, uh, that you'd find around the Great Lakes area. But I said. But it was more northern woods. And I said that, and I told him exactly what it looked like. And I told him that there was a, it was a sandy beach, but it wasn't white sand. It was kind of more brownish colored sand. And he says, you know, my dad used to have a favorite fishing place that he used to go. And Brad told me where it was. I was up in the northern woods, kind of off from the Great Lakes. But um, it, it, it was a bay with a beach. And his dad used to love going there and taking the taking the, his sons with him. And they'd go on a fishing trip up there. And so he gave me the name of it. And um, anyhow, I went into Google. And I typed in Google Images. Or went to Google Images. And I'm going through all the pictures. And I says, Brad, that's the spot. This is the spot that I, I saw. And he says, Mary, he says, that's the, that's the exact same place as Dad used to take us boys. It was his very favorite place in the world. And he says, right there, and he kind of pointed to a little spot on the picture, he says, that's where we would, um, that's where we would um, uh, dock from with our boat. You know, they pull the boat into the water there, go out and do fish, and then come back. And that. But he says that's the, the exact same place. It, he says, I've walked that sand with my dad. And so I realized what had happened was when dad, when Brad's dad crossed, he needed a little bit. He either needed, it was, I figured two things. Either he needed R&R. &R, you know, because he, he, all the things he'd gone through and he decided to just take off fishing or that was his heaven because Brad said it was his most favorite spot in the world. That's where he always wanted to be. And every chance they got, that's where they'd go. And so that could have been his heaven. How amazing is that, right? Uh, I, I, I mean, 
It was right there in color, just like how you're seeing me right now. Now, I have always done this psychically, intuitively, and been very, very good. But if I hadn't done that 76543 and went by what she said, I would never have gotten that. You know, never in a million years. So now, okay, so the best way to confirm something, you know, to find out if something's real, is get confirmation, right? It's like a scientist. They can't, won't go with one experiment. They have to have another experiment. And if, it can, if you can duplicate it, then you got something. So I told Derek, Brad, I says, you know, I says, I've never, I've never talked, I, I, I said, I've never tried to meditate and try talking to my mom, or I don't really, even when I have the psychic uh, give me readings, I don't ask about my mom or my dad, because I says, I keep them with me so much, and I'm constantly talking back and forth to them. And I'm feeling their answers. You know what I mean? The yeses and the noes. And I feel them happy. I feel them get disgusted with me or whatever. But intuitively. Again, I'd see. I'd feel them. I'd feel their energy. I'd feel. And um, I could feel their love. And I could feel their yeses and their noes. You know, mentally. Um, um, but. That's about as far as it ever went. So yesterday, I'm up here, and I go back to that show because I like her. And I've actually got it up on Facebook of who to, I, uh, I had suggested that if anybody's going to study, it should be under her because she actually gives uh, classes. But anyhow, uh, I decided, you know, I am going to talk to my mom. So I did the seven, the six. I found my happy place that time. And I did my seven, my six, my five, my four. And each time I went a little deeper, a little deeper, and a little deeper. You don't have, with the way that her method is, you don't have to spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of meditation. Usually is putting your mind and tuning to something. So it takes about a minute or less. So it's like seven six, five, four, three. Now I'm going to quit right there because I don't want to put myself in a trance, okay? Because <laughs> I'm talking to you. So, but anyhow, and you take it down to, so I took it down to the one. And I visual, and I, and I said, I want to speak to my mom. So, Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to see my mom as she was, all right? But instead, I see an older woman, my grandmother, and she's got like a, a girl with her that's maybe like 10 years old, 11 years old, and she's holding grandma's hand. And now again, it's just as vivid as what I'm showing, what you're seeing me again vivid uh, like lucid dreaming and anyhow she said she said she's a, she was showing her I I was she was mom and she says I'm showing yourself myself at this age with grandma or with your grandma my mom because this was my happiest time being a little girl and being with my mom and so that's how she after she crossed she says this is how she chooses to live and they were on a farm and um, I says why did you choose a farm because that's kind of hard work you know and she said because those were my happiest moments my happy where my happiness was my thoughts was always back there on the farm with mom. So I says, that makes sense. And then, again, I mean, this is going on. I'm seeing her and everything, but another comes through. And it's of a sunflower right in my face. Great big old sunflower. Well, big old yellow one. And so, anyhow, um, 
this year I wanted to plant sunflowers in the worst way. And I was doing a whole bunch of other things, got involved in other plants and stuff like that, and I didn't do the sunflowers. And I regretted that because sunflowers are so happy. Okay. And but anyhow I didn't grow them. And but there was two spots, there was two plants. Fred had pointed out to me later. He says, Mary, there's a sunflower. And I said, oh my God, yeah. And it had grown, it, it, was, uh, it was growing out of the, um, an area where I had other flowers, right? And it had grown right up through the middle. And here's this nice big old yellow sunflower. And then I looked over by our, off the deck and growing through, because we have a, we have a wooden deck, but then it goes down into like a patio, which is made out of brick. And grow, growing next to this little pine tree we had there, a cedar tree, growing out through those bricks was another sunflower, right? And it's like, it, they've been making me happy. Every time I go out and I see them, it kind of makes me happy because I got my sunflowers, right? So anyhow, as I'm visiting with mom, and all of a sudden whoosh, comes in that uh, that sunflower, I'm saying, "Wow, where did that sunflower come?" And mom, in her little girl voice, looking real proud at me, she says, "You forgot your sunflowers, and so I gave those sunflowers to you to make you happy." It's like, oh my God. And so anyhow, we that was pretty much kind of the whole thing. And so we did the disconnect. I told them how much I love them. And that from now on, be, now that I know how to do it, I'm going to be visiting with them a lot more. Not just in my head intuitively, but to actually do it like a medium does it. And it's... So I'm really happy that my, because like I said, for weeks now I've been praying to the universe to upgrade my psychic abilities. And they did. And I, and um, it's just been amazing the doors that have opened up to me since all of this has happened. And I just cannot tell you how thrilled it is to actually be able to see my mother and to actually talk to her and to see her as a little girl and to see her happy you know because my mom you know um she died when she was 60 with cancer so she went through uh, in those days they didn't have the, the medication that they got now so i mean she died of pain but she raised six children and um and she dedicated her whole her whole life to her children and to my dad and it, and it wasn't an easy life because at the, we didn't have a lot of money you know so I mean she did the you know she did it like they did in those generations she she did her canning she did her baking she, you know always had a, all that food on her table you know and she just was a good woman and but a hard worker so if anything, she deserved to go back to being a child and being with her mom. And I was so happy to see that she had chosen that in her life, to just be happy, you know. So you guys can do that too. So anyhow, that's my update. It's been an interesting two weeks, hasn't it? So I've been playing with that too, and um, I don't know where I'm going yet. I think because I've had, I've had, I mean, this is a big project I'm doing. This um, preserving the ancient mounds and the mound builders. I mean, creating a nonprofit, trying to get a grant to buy that uh, that bed and breakfast um, on that pyramid in Burlington. That's a big, big project. Um, I'm finishing my books, but that's totally out of my safety zone, you know, um, but 
I've noticed Aunt, uh, Andy contacted me. He told me that he was he's thinking about dropping his job, his career, and he's got a family, and he's ready to give that career up to go to start learning psychotherapy and opening up his own practice. And then another friend of mine, she just called me yesterday, and she called me because she kind of wanted me to kind of help her, encourage her a little bit, you know, on opening up her own metaphysical store. So kind of walking, so there's three of us right now that's walking away from our comfort zone and trying something new. And I really think it's because of this lion's gate. I think that there's more and more people that have decided to get rid of the baggage, step off that comfort zone into finishing their path, you know, doing the things that they were meant to do when they first came to this earth. But they got caught up in fear, you know. Things got too comfortable for them, you know. They didn't want to stir the pot. And so I, I think that this is what this Lion's Gate is all about. Uh, what um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the eclipse coming is all about. Um, we've got a lot of uh, uh, doorways opening up right now and uh, pushing us. Making us decide, do we want this or don't we want it? And if we don't want it, it's pushing us to do something different then, to follow our dreams, and no fear, that's a big one, no fear, and the biggest one though is trusting in the universe, and handing it over to the universe to get things done, because most people, I've, I've, I used to do classes on this, and I'd see it happen all the time, people would say, I tell them, you have to hand it over to the universe, you got to do your work, but you got to hand it over to the universe to let them allow them through synchronicity to allow to have all these things flow into your life to create your new reality and so they said well, we can do that we can do it no they can't because i would hear them they'd say well we want a house a new home and then so they would give it to the universe the universe like we want a new home and we trust that you can give this to us. Okay. But then after they did that, just about the set, next sentence that come out of their mouth is uh, uh, them taking back control. Because they'll say, well, in order to get the house, you know, maybe I, I, need to, uh, I need to get a second job. Or maybe, you know, uh, start up a home, uh, in-home business or something like that. But you see, they just took it right away from the universe and took the control back. Once you give it to the universe, you got to allow the universe to, to have control. And then you sit back and you watch the signs as they come in. And you follow, follow, and when the, somebody starts knocking at your door, and when the opportunity starts knocking at your door, you need to open it up and let them in. You don't need to build the door, and you don't need to go down the street and find the opportunity to get into your house to knock the door. That part's up to the universe. So that is a really, really hard one for, me, for everybody, is trying to give that control over to the universe. But it's about the only way it happens, really. And that's what I'm doing, is I'm giving full control to the universe and in that way I don't have to worry about it that leaves me open to to do the things I need to do and they can send me people you know that know how to get things done they can find me opportunities to get the monies I need to start up that museum you know I have to give them that because if I don't I can't do it on my own you know and um who knows? I bet, but it's not up for me to figure it out. It's up to them how they're going to do it. So, anybody want a reading?
Okay. Anybody want a reading? I don't know uh, if you say yes or anything because I don't know if my uh, I don't know if this is my comment thing is is working or not. Vivian says yes. Okay, Vivian. Vivian, Vivian, Vivian. <laughs> I was talking to you and shuffling my cards, and I got them all mixed up here. Okay. Is there anything, Viv, that you, you want to know? I mean, no, best not tell me anything. Don't tell me anything, okay? But let's have, let's put... Get the control back to the cards in the universe, okay? Viv, 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 Viv Sue. And Viv is, uh, she didn't even know about her show, huh, Viv? And then you decided to, uh, one day you see me up, and it was last week, I think, that you saw me up and decided to re come on in. And you've been kind of hanging around ever since, huh? Okay, this one popped out. It's a popper. Oh, this is very, very good, Viv. Whoops. Didn't you get that before? I know somebody did. Victory and success. You can toot your own horn. Make your announcement. Because you have arrived. Da, da, da. Is right to what? Didn't you get that card before? Are you saying right on that? Or that I'm right on the victory and success? Oh, that's right. You got that nine before. Okay. Hmm. That, that was with your, that tower behind you, if I remember right. Now you say no. Didn't you have the tower behind you and you had your back towards it and you were holding a book? Was that the one? I don't know. She's not answering back. So I so I a lot of times I can't. I most well not a lot of times. Most of the time, okay, it was okay. So you did it, huh? Um, you did something. Uh, and and it was victory. Victory. Oh, victory! I get it. Victory and success is. That's just a, I would think that that is part of the, the reading that we did last week. Because you have chose to walk away and uh, start uh, concentrating more on your, um, the esoteric life, learning. So it looks like you're going to be very successful. Way to go. That's nice. This be this is a nice follow up card to that number nine. Let's see, um, six. This card signifies the possibility that a deep spiritual initiation, partnership, or union is taking place at this time, or is manifesting for the future. This doesn't always necessarily represent a love affair of the heart, but could signify other forms of relationships in your life, whether they're personal or business related. Remember, not all partnerships have to be one-to-one. -one. They can be forged with a group, an organization, a pet, or even an incident or situation. And, uh, 
No, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. I'm reading the wrong card. What is this? Six. <laughs> Oops. I don't know. This is psychic cards. I don't understand it. That's interesting. Because it's saying six is harmony. But the card says six is victory and success. But then when you go to the book for it, see it says harmony. I'm going, I'm going with that um, a success that uh, you're going back into learning, um, you know, uh, creating a new path in your life. You know, turning your back on it. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm thinking. And I have absolutely no under why, but this is, uh, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, this is the wrong, maybe it's the wrong uh, book for it. I don't know. But I kind of, like I said before, uh, Delser told me a long time ago that if I'm going to be good at cards, don't be reading the book. You know, you, you go with the feelings you get off the book or off the card. And so that's... Um, Then thinking of the carbon atom, 666. Well, 666 is 6 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 36, which is another 9. And 9 is, um, and 9 is like your, that card that you read before, or that I read before last week or whenever it was. Hi, Eliza. What you doing, Eliza? Do you want your cards, Brad? Eliza? Brad's having steak tonight, so we eat usually around 5, 15, something like that. So, I'm going to read Eliza's. And so, you know, if I was you guys, I would just... um. Uh, what was I going to tell you? Uh, I don't know. I, oh, I know what it was. I would ask for an upgrade in your psychic abilities. Because I know that's what I've been doing, and I've been having a wonderful, a wonderful good time doing it. And the universe is just, I think, given me, I never even knew, you know, I mean, I knew, but I always let the, uh, the mediums do all that stuff, and, because uh, I was totally happy with my, uh, my abilities. Six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. Oh, okay, and then that one card was a six. Six. So you had three sixes. Three is manifestation. Okay. Ah, uh, six. Eliza, you to be concentrating and building up your third eye chakra. Just like I was saying, you need to. Um, we gotta, we gotta start upgrading. You know, we have to start. Well, I mean, I did. You know, you don't have to, but it sure is fun upgrading. All right. I'm looking for, because third eye is the one that gives you that ability to see. Yeah, this is the same one, because there's your nine was solitude from the, showing this. I think that's crazy. 
that one card doesn't uh, match up to the book. Huh. Anybody else want a reading? So, anyhow, that's what I've been doing, upgrading, trying to put together this, um, um, this cover letter and, um, an inventory of different things I want to see with the, you know, when I go to Beloit um, Anthropology College, and uh, and now I'm going to be going to uh, Michigan and uh, talking to them, all those guys about um, uh, creating my the paperwork that I need to start up a, a nonprofit for a museum. And then just watching the opportunity to probably to get that um, that bed and breakfast uh, on that uh, pyramid in uh, Burlington. That'd be the perfect place for it. And it's it hasn't sold. I mean, he's had it up for sale for two years, and some of my friends have said that the only, it hasn't sold because it's waiting for the perfect person to come along to get it. And we are the perfect people for it. So. Anyhow, anybody else want a reading? Anybody want a reading? So, BurlingtonNews.net is my website. Go to Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Mary Sutherland. Buy my books. I got seven of them already. I'm working on three more. And um, you can find them at burlingtonnews.net forward slash books. Or you can go to Barnes & Noble. You can go to Amazon or any other local bookstore. And uh, if they don't have it, tell them that um, to get it. And uh, they'll order it for you and, uh, and they'll have it for you. Uh, because uh, I... You know, I am an now. I'm an acknowledged author. You know, I've got seven books under my belt. Three more coming. So, you know, and it's all about in search. Well, I've got one on spirituality, living in the light, uh, and then I have one that's haunted Burlington, Wisconsin, and then the rest are uh, the rest are on ancient man. So. Um, and if you guys like gin, go on to my Facebook, into groups, and I, play, I put a lot of information on gin in there. And don't forget, we've got a drawing going on for um, one of those blue inflatable alien dolls. So if you're a member, then what you need to do is send me a personal message. Uh, with your name and your address, and we'll be doing the drawing at the end of this month. So you still have time. you got about two more weeks left, okay? So, anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Oh, you know what? Well, while we got the cards out, we never did do that reading, you know, for the global reading, a general reading for all of us, okay? <clears throat> huh. Well, now I don't understand this, because now here's the six. I don't get this, Viv. Here's six. We just looked at six, right? And it said, um, victory. And I says, but when I go into the book, it says six is harmony. So now I go and I shuffle the cards, and I pull up the six, and now it says harmony. You saw it. You saw the six. You saw the joy. Or you saw it on the bottom say success. You saw me go to the book to read up more on six and success. And it says six is harmony. I says that can't be because unless I got the wrong book. So now I go to the book and the card, this card falls out. It's six harmony. You saw it. You saw it. You, uh, 
OMG, you got that right. Huh. Coming together as one. But see, there's your six. Now it says harmony. I don't know how we jumped. But that's how the universe works with me. You know? <laughs> it just, you know, it's crazy. So anyhow, we'll stay with that harmony sign. I think, I don't know, I think it, I think we should stick with, um, uh, success. I think we should stay with success. That you're a winner. But you saw it. That, that card changed. <laughs> that, that six changed. Six harmony changed to six victory and success then after we got done with it all it switched back to harmony don't you just love how the universe works Oops. and remember always build on a firm foundation and this card shows us, again, the six, harmony. The male and the, the feminine coming together as one. That's where we're going to find our harmony. We'll always find it in the center. Not to extreme left, not to extreme right. You, come, you will find it in, everything will come together in the center. Um, and we'll grow from there. There will be some emotional loss coming. Or has already come. That affects your heart chakra. Let's see the angel. That white light right there under behind his head. That um, you got angels behind you. The angels are always there for us. We're never alone. And see it spirals, that white light spirals around into the heart chakra. So you will be healed. And besides that, if bad things didn't happen to us, we would stay in that comfort zone forever and we never would get to finish our path. So, you're having the hard times? Good. Probably. I mean, not really good, but I mean, it, 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 if, it, if it kicks you off that comfort zone and puts you back on your path and you can finish what you're doing here, you know, where you can follow your own passion, and that's a good thing. Neg negative things that happen to us in life aren't necessarily bad for us. They're usually good for us. Okay? But they hurt. But it shows a kick in the butt, right? It hurts. But you don't turn your butt to that person no more either, do you? You go and seek a place of another place of safety. So anyhow, that's it for today. Bless you all. I love you all. And um, update your your psychic abilities. Get yourself some good books or find people that um, that you feel good about that you want to be around. You know. Open yourself up to your passions. Yes, Bib, the hard times also brought me to where my, I'm at. If it had been for the hard, hard times, I would, you wouldn't be seeing me here doing what I'm doing. So, find your balance, find your happiness, find your passion. Because it's time now. 
you have been given now the okay to go for it. And that's what you need to do. That's what I'm doing. Um, uh, Lisa's doing, Andy's doing, we're, and you're do, doing this. You know, and all you others that are listening out there, it's, um, it, we've, been, we've been given the go-ahead. So let's make the best of a bad situation. Put our big girl boots on, big boy boots on, and go out there and kick some booty. Okay? This is Mary Sutherland. Until, until the next time. Okay? Love you guys. Have a great day.